Welcome to The Verdict. Kent Myers uh, once again without Mick Cornett, who, but he will uh, return shortly in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're really pleased today to present to you for the 21st time uh, the venerable, honorable, uh, irascible uh, Mike McCarville, who is Mr. Verdict for us, uh, particularly on political matters. He's kind enough to come talk to us about what's going on and as a matter of fact, that's what we've titled the show, <laughs> What's Going On? Uh, with the recent announcements of retirements and people deciding to run for things that they hadn't thought of before, uh, it's quite timely that we bring Mike on and let him tell us what's going on in the political landscape in Oklahoma. I think you'll enjoy it very much. He's a very entertaining guest to have uh, on his own, but with all this material, there's no telling what the set will look like when he's through. But uh, so you uh, sit back, relax. Uh, we're going to take you to a couple of minutes of commercials and then we'll be back and uh, bring Mike McCarville to you talking about what's going on. You're watching The Verdict. can offer is insight into understanding the Native American art, how these artists are expressing themselves as cultural people. I am Heather Otton. I'm a Native American researcher and curator, and I am Chickasaw. I can remember in first grade the teacher saying, well, you're so lucky you don't look Indian. That was difficult to hear, because it was what I was, it's what I am. I think there's a renaissance going on amongst the tribes. I think the Chickasaws are leading that. We didn't die. We're not gone. So what are we now? And what can we do now to start to form that identity, to survive into another century? And to have the culture guiding us into that future, that would be significant. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at profilesofanation.com. It's a North American energy revolution. We're the fastest growing source of new oil and natural gas supplies in the world. The shift to North American energy will create approximately 3 million jobs. All that money we've been sending overseas, $400 billion a year. Imagine that staying in our economy. It's a game changer. Real energy independence starts now. And it starts with Oklahoma. Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers here without Mick Cornett, but he'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, we are really pleased, as I indicated in the open, to welcome back uh, one of our very favorite guests, Mike McCarville, for his 21st appearance on The Verdict. Mike, uh, as I know you are aware, is a political uh, expert in uh, Oklahoma and nationally. Uh, he is also a political consultant from time to time. He's a former talk show host at KTOK. Uh, he is uh, the editor, publisher of the McCarville Report. He's the guy, he's our go-to guy on what's going on in Oklahoma politics and nationally. And we want to bring him to you first. So we are uh, giving you, a, we think, a very timely show based upon what all has been in the newspaper about political maneuverings. Uh, but uh, we are really pleased to welcome back to the uh, set of the verdict, Mike McCarville. Mike, welcome back again. Thanks, Kent. What are we going to talk about today? I mean, there's nothing going on. Oh, politically. I don't know. Let's talk about the NBA. Can you believe this? We have gone from <laughs> oh hum to oh my goodness. Well, I mean, it is Tom Coburn's announcement that he's going to step down at the end of this session of uh, and this Congress. Is, this is all set off the dominoes. All fortuitous because I had asked and put out the invite for you to be on the show 
before Coburn's before all this happened. That's so true. So this just yeah. fell into our lap. It, it's just it's amazing, Kent. You know, you stop and think about it. A year ago, we were all saying, "Yeah, 2014 is going to be a you know ho hum election year. Yeah. Nothing's going to be going on." <laughs> and here we are. We've got major races developing for the Senate, for the fifth congressional district, for the first congressional district, probably for the Corporation Commission. I mean, the dominoes are still falling. Well, uh, what? What do you, let's, let's kind of start Where do with we the start? Senate. Let's start with the let's Senate. Let's start with the Tom Coburn's announcement yeah. that he's going to step down uh, at the end of this session of Congress. Uh, it caught a lot of people, including me, a bit by surprise. I thought he might do that, but I thought it would be on into next year, perhaps. Uh, but uh, he decided it was time to step aside and concentrate on fighting the cancer and spending more time with his family, which is the tip-off to me this his comment about spend more time with his family, I think that's a tip off to all of us that his health is uh, in, in jeopardy, probably even more than we know. Yeah, let's and hope I pray not. that's not the case, right. uh, but it could be. But at any rate, his announcement sure did start the dominoes falling. Didn't take uh, long. Congressman yeah. James Langford from the 5th District, uh, first out of the box, running hard, uh, and uh, obviously uh, pedal to the metal. Uh, House Speaker T.W. Shannon's probably going to get into it sooner or later. Congressman Jim Bridenstine from Tulsa, probably going to get into it. Uh, and then you've got on the Democrat side, uh, former Congressman Dan Bourne says, nope, I'm happy right where I am. Yeah. I love being home. I don't like those airplanes anymore. Former Governor Brad Henry says, nope, I'm happy where I am, just started a new job. And then you move on to the 5th Congressional District, where Lankford's going to be stepping out. And you've got uh, former state senator Dave, uh, Steve Russell. You've got former representative Shane Jett, Senator Clark Jolly, uh, Paul Wesselhoff, representative, uh, Corporation Commissioner Patrice Douglas. All these names are just flying all over the place. And then on the Democrat side, we've got former Corporation Commissioner Jim Roth, uh, Tom Guild, uh, Representative Anastasia Pittman, uh, uh, Senator Al McCaffrey. Um, the names are just, they're flying all over the place. And it's, it's like this, you never know what time of the day is it, uh, you know, who's on what base and, yeah. and what's, the, what's the story right now. Well, when do they uh, have to make a decision? When do they have to actually file? Uh, filings in uh, April, I believe in it April. is. April, mm -hmm. yeah. So the special elections in June. Yeah, were you yeah. surprised one way or the other about, how, A, how quickly Governor Fallon announced a re-election date? I mean, a, a, an election Set date. Set the dates for it. No, no, not really. I think they were... Uh, of course, I mean, that's just a matter of, you know, glancing at, you know, the, what the law says and, and, uh, and making a decision. Uh, no, that, that didn't surprise me. I was, frankly, I was surprised at how fast Congressman Lankford got into it. He, uh, you know, this, uh, the announcement came, what, on Thursday, I believe it was? Mm -hmm. And by Thursday night, we're now told, Lankford was on the phone talking to people, uh, contributors, supporters, and uh, came out of the box uh, hard charging. Well, he's a first-term congressman, I guess. His second, yeah, second, second term. Yeah, second yeah. term. Um, well, let's kind of handicap that race a little okay. bit. Uh, who do you think are the strong contenders? Assuming all those folks that you ran through. Yeah, Langford, Shannon, and Bridenstine. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you handicap I, I, I that? I think uh, Langford uh, is going to be a very, very tough candidate. I think uh, House Speaker T. W. Shannon, for a lot of different reasons, is a formidable candidate for anything he wants to run for. Uh, excellent reputation. Uh, well liked by conservatives, and I mean all the way from the extreme right to the to the center. Um, uh, African American uh, is an excellent uh, stand-up speaker. Does a great job. Uh, is well liked by all the the national entities that uh, can help a guy's career along. Uh, has an excellent track record in the house, and has done a pretty masterful job as speaker. And I just think he's he'll he'll be a tough candidate if he does get into it. Congressman Jim Bridenstine, a little bit more of an unknown factor, first-term excuse me, first-term congressman, uh, not well known in central Oklahoma or really anywhere around the state outside of the Tulsa area, so he'll have a bit of a hill to climb. Uh, Bridenstine's. Uh, How does that turn around on Langford? Is he in the same spot about well known in central Oklahoma, but not necessarily the rest? Uh, of I the think state? That, that's true. Not necessarily in the rest of the state. Uh, however, being in the, in the state's so-called major media market, he's better known Western Oklahoma, Southern Oklahoma than Bridenstine is. Mm. Uh, it's it's funny the way the markets, the television markets in particular, kind of break out. 
the Tulsa market is pretty much Tulsa northeast and east, and central Oklahoma is west, south, and central Oklahoma. Yeah. So there's a, a little bit of a hold card there for uh, Lankford. And uh, Bridenstine, the same tenure as uh, Lankford, second term? Uh, no, he's in his first term. He's yeah, in he's his first term. Uh, yeah, he is. Hmm. Yeah, he defeated the incumbent, John Sullivan. Well, who we didn't hear from, uh, well, we did hear from him, but who is not in the race is Tom Cole. Tom Cole uh, just came out and said, hey, I'm happy right where I am. And uh, there, I think there were a number of them that took a quick look at it and said, nope, happy where I'm at, I'm not going to do it. Hmm. Um, well, then, uh, as I understand only through reports in the news, not otherwise, uh, these folks that are sitting congressmen are going to have to resign their seat if they run? Or, uh, or well, yeah, well, yeah, because members of Congress are up over two years. Yeah. So uh, it is it is going to be uh, interesting. Of course, the big question right now is if Shannon decides to run, if and when uh, will he resign as Speaker of the House? Mm -hmm. He won't have to resign his House seat, obviously, but he, he'll probably give up that leadership role. And I think I don't think it'll happen anytime soon, but it could happen anytime. Who knows? Well, we've got a, a, an election in June. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he Special. it would be tough yep. for him to uh, make it all the way through the session. Yeah. Now, now here's another one. Here's another. Talk about dominoes. All right. Here's another one. One of the names that is starting to come to the fore in the first district uh, up in Tulsa to replace Bridenstine, if right. he does go for the Senate, is that of, uh, of uh, Insurance Commissioner. John Doak. Right. Now, see, here's yeah. a name. Nobody's really thought about this, but look, think about this. Doak uh, has, uh, in his campaigns, he has carried Tulsa County and that whole area by margins of 70, 72, 73 percent. Wow. Most of that's in the first district. Yeah. Now, you yeah. talk about a leg up. He's going to have, he's got plenty of money. And he can raise, you know, as much as he wants to. Plenty of I name think he'd recognition. Be a, he'd, uh, well, yeah. And he's from Tulsa. I mean, he yeah. lives up there. Yeah. Uh, he'll be a formidable candidate in the first district. Uh, so, you know, and then, <laughs> of course, then we've also got, doesn't have anything to do with the dominoes, but it has to do with electoral politics. State for a uh, race for schools superintendent. The incumbent mm. Republican, Janet Barisi, under fire from uh, those on the right. And another Republican, Joy Hoffmeister, has already announced is running hard. So that's going to be a race. That 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 in and of itself would have made this an interesting election year. But as I mean, you look over the field now. We've got one, two, three, four, possibly five very interesting races going on. And that doesn't even mention the governor's race. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's uh, take a minute and uh, talk about that uh, uh, state superintendent. Uh, Jennifer yes. Brisey mm -hmm. yep. race. Uh, the Hoffmeister, is she a Democrat or Republican? Republican. She's a Republican. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So, so that'll be a primary oh, fight. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. You got any thoughts and about there, that? Well, <clears throat> there are some Democrats that are salivating on the other side just because of all the controversy that uh, Barisi has been embroiled in. I think Barisi is wounded. Uh, I'm not sure it's a mortal wound, uh, but somebody like uh, Hoffmeister uh, can exploit uh, her shortcomings, the Breezy's perceived shortcomings, and that will be a very, very competitive race. Let's take a break. We'll okay. come back in about a couple of minutes. You're Catch visiting. My well, yeah. <laughs> Let's just slow down a minute. Uh, we're visiting with Mike McCarville, talking about what's going on in Oklahoma politics. We'll be right back. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. <laughs> The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens. 
to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Welcome back to The Verdict, Kent Myers with, with our guest Mike McCarville talking about what's going on in Oklahoma politics. Uh, we're really pleased to have Mike join us again and, and particularly this very active time, a little surprisingly active uh, time because of uh, Senator Coburn's resignation. Uh, let's uh, talk uh, a little bit, uh, we, we did at the break, that's where we quit, but I want to go back to it, a little bit about Hoffmeister. Tell us a little bit yeah, more yeah, see, about this her. Is, this is the race for a school superintendent. Yes. The incumbent, of course, Janet Barisi, Republican. And the primary challenger right now is Joy Hoffmeister, also a Republican. And I think her candidacy very well illustrates the split in the Republican Party over Barisi and her stewardship. For example, Hoffmeister right now has 21 sitting Republican legislators who have publicly endorsed her unheard of. Well, wh why is that? I mean, what, what has they're, caused they're that to come about? They're unhappy with Barisi's stewardship, with her ideas, with her programs, with the way the Department of Education <coughs> has been uh, conducted. Um, statewide vote, Barisi's name's oh, already yes. going to be out there. That's, that's true, and Hoffmeister's a, a blank slate, if and you will. What's her background? Uh, business. Mm -hmm. um, is she... Uh, uh, on this issue that Barisi seems to have some uh, uh, detractors about, the Common Core. Common Core, yes. Yeah, where mm -hmm. is Hoffmeister on that? She's on the other know, side. Yeah. Is she? Yep. So it'll be Almost every major issue, uh, you'll find Hoffmeister on the side opposite uh, from Barisi. Has Hoffmeister run for anything before? No, nope, not that I know of. Know mm -hmm. of? Yeah. Well, let's, uh, now, you mentioned uh, Patrice Douglas, the Corporation, Corporation Commission. Corporation Commission, yeah. Going to run for... Uh, going to run for Congress in the 5th District. 5th District. Yep. So what happens at the Corporation Commission? Oh, my Commission? gosh. Well, another one of those big dominoes, Kent. Um, everybody and their dog, not you, not me, <laughs> is going to be looking at the Corporation <laughs> Commission. At least I hope we don't. Uh, we've heard the names of... Uh, I'm just going to rattle off these names. All right. Uh, Cliff Brannon, Senator David Holt. Uh, Kobe Schwartz, Gus Blackwell, Representative, Rob Johnson. This Rob Johnson, by the way, ran in 2008 and barely lost then to a Dana Murphy in the, in the Republican race. Now, where's Johnson from? Is he from uh, Kingfisher? Oh, I believe that's right, yeah. Yes, that's correct. And then you've got uh, the uh, Senate President Pro Tem, Brian Bingman, who's making noise like he might think about running. So, is he term now, what, uh, that's just six. <clears throat> Yes, he is. Yeah. That's six I just ticked off, and, uh, you know, it's just developing. So it is going to be, listen, if you own a television station or a newspaper or a radio station <laughs> or an advertising agency, uh, you got to be loving this. Well, or We're going to see money flying all over the place this year. Well, not with, with respect to money, but if you're involved in a television show that needs to continually get guests, <laughs> uh, yep. candidates yep. love to come on. Well, one thing about it, there's there's... No shortage of things to discuss. Well, and I don't, we don't have enough Sundays in the rest of the year to give equal time to everybody. That's I was kind of concerned there. I wouldn't have anything to talk about today, <laughs> and I'm having trouble keeping my breath. <laughs> well, we haven't talked about that one uh, office that uh, uh, seems to uh, be important, and that's the governor's race. Yes. Uh, there, <laughs> yes apparently there's going to be one. Well, there's going to be a contested primary. Randy Brogdon, a uh, former state senator who uh, ran against uh, Fallon, Governor Fallon, uh, in the past and got beat. How did he do? Uh, he was uh, second in a field of five that Fallon won outright. Oh. So, yeah, which was pretty impressive at the time. Yeah. And it's still impressive. And, I mean, you know, every poll we've seen shows Fallon uh, Kent with a popularity rating just out of sight in the 
70 percent or close to it approval rate even popularity and uh, she i think she's developed some blemishes since those polls were taken uh, but i just have a hard time seeing anyone at this point anyway defeating uh, governor fallon um do you see uh on the uh, oil on the democratic side we do have one announced yes that's candidate. true that's true is that Representative Dorman? Is that who uh, that's is? right. Joe Dorman is yeah. uh, going to do it. But I, and there may be others. Uh, and I, I, <laughs> I, you know, it's so amusing the uh, the uh, the pundits, the powers that be, they start throwing around these names. And sometimes the name getting thrown out precedes any thought by the person being named that they might do it. And then they think about it and think. Well, that's pretty good speculation. I might like my name being speculated so they don't do anything to knock the speculation down. Yeah. So then in two days, it's a foregone conclusion that person's going to run, and that person has made no such statement. <laughs> and I've seen this happen before, and that's probably going to happen this time, too. Well, they're going to have to be making their decisions pretty quickly, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I guess. Well, so. yeah. I mean, you know, literally, in a, in a you know, five-and-a-half-month time span, you gotta, you gotta get your support together. The biggest thing these days is raising money, particularly with a lot of these candidates who don't have name ID, either statewide or really solid name ID in the area they wanna run it. So the political donors thought they were gonna have a little time off. It oh, the, like no time gone. off this time around. They're yeah. Gonna be busy. Well, um, <clears throat> have you heard anything about the lieutenant governor's race? Uh, no, that's one we haven't heard much. <laughs> I think uh, Lieutenant Governor Lamb's uh, going to be satisfied to stay where he is, and uh, by all accounts, doing a great job, uh, well liked. Uh, spends a lot of time traveling around the state. He's building his political base for a race, but I think he'd like to be governor, and that would mean at the end of uh, Governor Fallon's second term. Mm. Well, the uh, he would hope. He would hope. Sure. Well, uh, what about uh, uh, Jerry Askins? Her name, she Listen, ran Fallon former, former a pretty Lieutenant good race. Former Lieutenant Governor Askins uh, yeah. has made it clear, I think, that she's done with elective politics. She appears to be happy of where she is over at the University of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And uh, a great lady, by the way. Uh, been a friend of mine for many, many years. and Ran Governor Fallon a great race and still got, what, 34% of the vote or whatever it was. Yeah. Just uh, clearly was not her year. And I just think she's, she's moved on. And a lot of people do that. Were you surprised or or not at Dan Boren's reluctance to get back involved? Uh, no, I was not. I'll tell you, uh, over the years, I've become somewhat of a, uh, an acquaintance of uh, former, former Congressman Boren. And I, in talking to him several times, I got the very distinct impression, particularly when the, the babies started coming in his family, mm. that he was really getting weary of climbing on that airplane Sunday night and not getting back home till Friday night or Saturday or whenever. And uh, I think that ultimately is what led to his decision to uh, check out. With uh, Tom Coburn's uh, stepping down, <clears throat> that will alter the seniority in the Senate oh, yes. from Oklahoma mm -hmm. uh, to Senator Inhofe being a senior senator now. Will that make any practical, real difference to us? I don't, I don't think so. I don't really see any practical and difference. As far as uh, committee memberships, of course, they'll be. Well, uh, Coburn will lose, obviously, will lose some seats on the mm -hmm. committees that, that Coburn's on, but uh, I don't see it making any real real difference. Mm -hmm. uh, Inhofe is up for re-election in two years? No, he's up in uh, this year. In this year? Yes, uh-huh, yeah. Well, and we haven't even talked about him. No, it. yeah, well, and I, I, guess I don't not much reason think he'll to. even have any serious challengers. <laughs> Well, I'll be amazed everybody else is looking at all these other races. Well, the only serious challenge you and I have is the clock. That's correct. And it's now caught up with us. It always, it always gets us. It so like, always it's does. It's like Father Time. We, we have so much fun. We'll stay here <laughs> another couple of hours after we go off the air. But uh, we do have to shut her down for now. Michael, right, thank Kim. you so much for coming. Always a pleasure, sir. Well, you've been watching The Verdict with Mike McCarville. Uh, I'll be right back. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, 
Each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. I think for us, once we got started and we began to see the tremendous need um, just within our state, um, it really was just a calling for us. The blessings far outweigh any obstacles that we've faced. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to The Verdict, finishing our show with uh, Mike McCarville, our political expert and guru and a fellow who knows what's going on out in the political circles, both uh, locally, nationally, and beyond, probably. Uh, we're really pleased you join us today and uh, let us know uh, how you liked our show by going to our website. Our website is theverdict.tv. Let us know what topic you'd like to see us uh, discuss or what uh, uh, guest you'd like to see us have on. I have a feeling that we're going to have a string of uh, candidate guests coming up here uh, as this political process continues. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week in your weekend. Uh, I hope Mick Cornette will be back in a couple of weeks, but thanks for being with us today. You've been watching The Verdict.